here to discuss that curious and perhaps symbiotic relationship as well as other topics. Steve Lonigan, Director of Monetary Policy for American Principles in Action. Steve joins us from Newsmax, New York. So Steve, there you are in close proximity to Wall Street. Why is it Wall Street reacted so beneficially and yet you criticize uh, the Fed's decision? J.D., that's a great question because you're right. As I'm sitting here at this moment, Wall Street's continuing to rally. We're probably going to see all-time highs by the end of the year. And that is a direct response to Janet Yellen's statement. And right there is the problem, is that the statements of one single central banker can have so much influence on our financial markets. But at the heart of this is still an underlying issue that we cannot ignore, J.D., and that is that the wages of the average income household in this country, lower-income Americans, is staying stagnant. We had one good month of reports this month. That's not a trend. And the fact that we're continuing to see a widening income gap. Hey, look, I'm thrilled to see my own portfolio benefiting from today's Wall Street rally. But you still have fundamental issues here. And that is this, this Federal Reserve Bank Chairman's statement is so profoundly impactful. This, this wasn't the way it used to be. And when you're working in an economy where the statements of one person can have so much impact, that's a dangerous area to be in, I believe, and so do many others. And it's nothing new. We can remember Alan Greenspan criticizing irrational exuberance years ago and then a downturn on the market. So the bottom line seems to me you're suggesting is not so much personally but structurally and the whole notion of what the Fed is and what it does in terms of our currency. Yes, it is, very much so. What we need, J.D., is a sound currency that everyone can believe in. You know, if you look at the average household incomes of Americans prior to 1971 when Richard Nixon ended the sound monetary policy of the gold standard from World War II till 71, everyone benefited. You had the golden age of the, of the middle-income wage earner. The average incomes of poor, middle, and upper-income people went up 85% adjusted for inflation, 85% in that period of time from 48 till 71. Since 1971 until now, we've seen a widening income gap and we've seen the wages and the incomes of, middle, uh, of lower income wage earners remain stagnant for 41 years in a row. Um, today, the Fed treats uh, lower income, when, when low and middle income wage earners get salary increases, they call that inflation. That's not inflation, that's prosperity. Where we want to see a sound dollar. Now, JD, several months, several weeks ago on November 14th, in, in a startling new move for the Fed, Janet Yellen met with representatives of the far left, liberal special interest groups, very liberal special interest groups who want to influence monetary policy. They've said it openly. Um, she hasn't met with representatives of the center right, with groups like American Principles in Action or other friends that, uh, 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 and many other groups who would like to meet and, with her. And obviously, a she, ought to her. To, she ought to meet with everybody, those on the left, right, and center. Want to get to something in the minute and a half that remains. Earlier this week, Peter Schiff was on this program. He had some interesting predictions. Steve, take a listen, then I want to get your reaction. The United States and the U.S. output, that the decline we have seen. That right now, Steve, and I don't want to. I, okay, apparently we do have it now. Let's take a listen. If you remember, oil prices dropped from about $150 a barrel down to close to 30. So it was a much bigger drop to much lower levels. And sure, uh, it was a benefit for consumers, but it was also the beginning of the 2008 financial crisis and the Great Recession that ensued. So I think we can enjoy uh, cheaper gasoline, but I think, unfortunately, it's probably a harbinger of another recession. 45 seconds, Steve Lonigan. Do you share the perspective of Peter Schiff on lower gas prices being beneficial to consumers but leading to another recession? I think, yes, that we are leading into another recession. The Wall Street is booming today, but we all know that's not going to last. The question is how are we going to deal with it in a couple of years when we do see a recession and what's going to happen to middle? You know, the left does not have a monopoly on caring about unemployment and lower-income people. Conservatives have a better message on how to address that. That's why it's critical that Janet Yellen give equal time to the right of center groups like Cato, Heritage, American Principles in Action, and others meet with us so we can discuss our plans for future economic prosperity. And speaking of time, Steve Lonigan, we're going to make sure you have more of it on the other side of this break to talk about our economy, what ails us, and what we do to return to the veracity of the phrase as sound as a dollar. More with our friend Steve Lonigan coming up. 
Let's call back in my friend Steve Lonigan, Director of Monetary Policy for American Principles in Action. Steve, you have run for the U.S. Senate, as have I. We are no strangers to political money and political monetary policy, if you will. The Jeb Bush pre-announcement announcement earlier this week, what does that mean in terms of money? Do you think a lot of donors will go ahead and write checks to Jeb Bush just as, quote, insurance? I'm sure he has a major fundraising base, J.D. Let's face it, the whole Bush family mechanism is pretty powerful, but there are still donors who are going to sit back and wait to see more, where he stands on certain issues. He has the problem of his major support of Common Core, which is terribly unpopular, his support uh, of, of amnesty. Um, so he's going to have to deal with those issues. And he hasn't really come out clearly and said, I'm running. So um, I think there's going to be a big battle over And you have a number of people that potentially candidates for president, including Chris Christie in New Jersey, uh, who have the ability to raise a lot of money to well, compete for those dollars. Let's talk more about Governor Christie. Obviously, he was uh, lukewarm in his endorsement when, when you uh, uh, took on uh, the now senator uh, from New Jersey, uh, Brother Corey there. But I'm just kind of curious. Christie, another, quote, establishment darling. Does his geographical and philosophical proximity to Wall Street mean he is still able to raise big money despite some, some movement downward in the polls? Yeah, that's a good question. I think Jeb Bush has equal, if not better, entree into those markets. I don't know if the geographical position matters. How, however, I also don't know if the Republican Party in the country is ready for another Republican candidate from the Northeast, like Mitt Romney was from Massachusetts. And, and so Jeb Bush is going to dig very deeply into what would have been Chris Christie's most important base going into a primary, especially in the fundraising area. Well, we, we talk about the guys from the establishment. What about the grassroots conservatives? There, there's been real concern, Steve, just that It'll end up being Bush as the, quote, establishment favorite. And then any number of conservatives, whether Rand Paul as a conservative, the more libertarian bent, or, or Ted Cruz, or uh, someone else, and all that conservative support gets fractured, and here comes another establishment nominee. Yeah, you know, J.D., we always sit here months ahead of time, and it's going to depend, and try to speculate about how the race is going to go, but it's going to depend on who's ultimately in the race. If Jeb Bush and Chris Christie are competing, they're going to split that sort of establishment base. I think that creates a problem for both of them. They may want to put their heads together and decide who's going to be the candidate. I don't think either one of them distract from, say, a Rand Paul or a Ted Cruz, uh, for that matter, and that, uh, that, but actually having them both in the race could help them. I think both Governor Christie in New Jersey and Jeb Bush have a problem with the conservative base because of their somewhat wishy-washy positions on the issues that really resonate in a primary. Well, you're a guy who, who knows politics and knows public policy. Will Rand Paul follow in the tradition of his dad who basically went to war with the Federal Reserve? And given your stance on monetary policy, is that a wise priority to have in terms of uh, making the dollar sound again? We've got about a minute and a half. Well, you know, J.D., Rand Paul is his own man. He, he became a U.S. senator through his own hard work. And while he shares our values when it comes to the Fed and monetary policy, he's not going to lead with that, I don't believe, like his father did, because he wants to create his own image. But I do believe that Rand Paul would be one of the best, if not the best, candidate for president when it comes to controlling the Fed and sound monetary policy. So that's my first bar for a candidate going into the elect this election, and that's who has the guts to take on the 800-pound gorilla in the room, and that's the Federal Reserve System in Washington, D.C. We'll keep an eye on it. Steve Lonigan, you may have finished second to Cory Booker in that New Jersey special Senate election, but you are second to none in terms of wanting to get back to basics, a strong dollar, and the embrace of conservative principles. Steve, we wish you a very Merry Christmas, and we look forward to talking to you in the days ahead. Take good care. Thank you for that, J.D. Good, Merry Christmas. Yes, indeed. Merry Christmas. And do you say Merry Christmas to your neighbors? Do you say Merry Christmas to those who wait on you in stores and restaurants? 
Why does the big media have a bah humbug Scrooge approach to Christmas? We'll talk about it next with two important guests as America's Forum rolls on.